Back in 2019, an edtech called Scalar decided to do for tech education what Masters Union had done for the traditional MBA. They actually started as an interview prep uh, company, so they helped uh, whoever wanted to sort of crack Amazon interviews or Google interviews or even interviews based on Python and uh, uh, rest of the programming languages. So that's how they began. That's my colleague Atul Krishna. He covers education and edtechs for the Ken. Now Atul says that engineering graduates could not get enough of this particular edtech, especially after Scalar realized it needed to teach engineering students more than just how to sound smart at interviews. It started offering them specialized AI courses. In 2019, they made a slight shift towards being this uh, upskilling platform. So they started as this. Uh, a uh, certification platform that gives software development programs uh, such as full stack and uh, the idea was that since they were already a interview prep company so they could leverage that experience as well as the experience that they have as an upskilling platform scalers pitch to students was simple take ai machine learning and data science courses with us get placed at top firms and make a lot more money it was positioning itself as a more hands on alternative to your traditional tech education it was a big promise but it's one that scalar was able to honor well at least for a little while with its first batch the edtech managed to place every single one of its 83 students it also managed to more than double their average annual salary to around 15 lakh rupees but 5 years have passed since then and something has changed Atul spoke to multiple people who had signed up for Scalers courses to understand how it played out for them. One of them was Nikhil. Uh, he took a full stack course because he did his engineering from a tier three college, and he then took a computer course from whatever academy that was there, and that helped him land a job at one of the major tech firms in India. although it's it's just i think 3.6 lakh was his uh, per annum salary so he was trying to upskill so he already has this experience of uh, you know getting a certificate that helped him get him a job so he thought oh something like scalar would help him do it better uh, and he was aiming for like a 10 lpa salary or something and it was even promised to him when he spoke with one of the one of their marketers even nikhil had all his hopes pinned on scalar He even took out a 3.5 lakh rupee loan for the course. That was his entire annual salary at the time. But unfortunately, things didn't quite work out the way he had hoped. He couldn't get any job interviews. He didn't get any job interviews. He didn't get any callbacks even though he applied for multiple places and even used the scalers assistance. There was no callback. And that is true for many of the students who took it. The glory days of Scalar seem to be coming to an end. This is a company that rode the post-pandemic IT boom on the back of its AI courses. It saw a 6x increase in operating revenue between 2022 and 2024. But now the tide is turning, and the very thing that put Scalar on the map is quickly becoming its biggest competitor. Welcome to Daybreak, a business podcast from the Ken. I'm your host Rahil Philippos, and I don't chase the news cycle. Instead, every day of the week, my colleague Snigda and I come to you with one business story that is worth understanding and worth your time. Today is Tuesday, the fifteenth of April. When you look at the evolution of Scalar from way back in 2014 when it was helping students tackle placement interviews to 2019 when it got into tech upskilling it immediately becomes clear that its two co-founders Abhimanyu Saxena and Anshuman Singh were trying to plug what they saw as massive gaps in the education system So even when Anshuman and Abhimanyu worked uh, so they worked in work for tech companies in the US Uh, Abhimanyu worked for Fab. dot com, and uh, Anshuman reported directly to Mark Zuckerberg when it was called Facebook. So even then, they had realized that there was this gap between 
uh, freshers that were coming in and the amount of employable fresh freshers there are because what academy are teachers might lag behind what the industry is uh, using right now so they realized this gap so after they started interview with in 2019 they decided that okay let's start scaler and sort of try to bridge this gap so this gap exists especially in india it definitely exists the recent economic survey found that a large portion of the graduates are not employable so uh, there is a gap that it exists because the industry the academia is usually too theoretical even though they are trying to change it's not keeping pace with the uh, technological changes which happens almost a week right right so scaler's promise was kind of to help you be ahead of the curve almost right right yes so the scaler's promise was to address this particular gap so yes when you go to college you get a degree you have your connections uh, you learn theoretically about the subject but it's not necessary that every college in india uh, even the iits to some extent that they know what the industry is currently using what software they're using and uh, what kind of uh, softwares they're getting into so how they are using ai stuff like that so a uh, scaler as a company sort of acts as a bridge where they know what what is being taught but they also hold regular meetings with uh, industry people they try to understand uh, industry people come and teach through scaler so they uh, so they ensure that whatever knowledge that the students have it's relevant when atul spoke to saxena about a month ago he admitted that they also got a bit lucky with their timing meaning that just 9 months after scalo was founded when the pandemic prompted homebound candidates to want to upskill themselves the company was there ready and waiting with its courses this combined with the edtech's dedicated placement support meant that it reaped huge benefits its homepage at the time was plastered with success stories of students getting 100 even 200% hikes during the post pandemic it boom Right, Atul. Can you tell me about some of the courses that Scaler was offering at the time? Right. So Scaler offered uh, like software development courses, like full stack, and then they introduced courses in AI and machine learning. And uh, so these are specific courses that are focused on what the industry is focusing on right now. And their idea is to certify them in this in these courses and then help them get a job in these big companies. The thing is, since 2019, the hiring landscape has changed completely, particularly when it comes to entry-level software jobs. And we all know the reason for this change. It's AI, artificial intelligence. It can do the same jobs faster, cheaper, and like Atul put it, without any lunch breaks. Hi, I'm briefly interrupting this episode to tell you about the Ken's next live event. We were just talking about a startup that made a name for itself by promising professionals a better shot at landing their dream jobs. But I want to shift the focus for a second to the people actually signing up for courses like these. Ambitious, hopeful, mostly young professionals fighting for a shot at a better job and a more successful career in particularly trying times. You see, the 40-year career that professionals took for granted as they entered their first jobs is crumbling. Even a 10-year career arc is getting hard to predict and plan for. Roles are getting eliminated, hierarchies flattened, work is getting automated with AI. So, how can professionals across ages, industries and levels of experience plan ahead in such an environment? Well, we are hoping to answer just that at the Ken's live event in Bangalore on the 21st of April. Two by two hosts Rohin Dharmakumar and Praveen Gopal Krishnan will be joined by three distinguished guests. Harshil Mathur, co-founder and CEO of Razorpay, Vasta Agarwal, chief business officer at Inmobi, and Professor Saurav Mukherjee of IIM Bangalore. Join them as they discuss how we should rethink careers for a new age of rapid change, innovation, and uncertainty. Details about the event and a link to purchase tickets will be in the show notes of this episode. Although they are really in tune with what the industry is doing. the thing is when i spoke to a few software developers what they do is they rely on a lot of copilots and they try to learn on their own now this is not something a beginner software developer can do 
this is something an experienced software developer is able to do so which means that people like them are able to rely on the copilot itself and their base knowledge that they already have to learn new things like a software developer i th- uh, i spoke to he said he learned aws just by working with copilot now it's not possible for a beginner software developer but it just means that there is ai is becoming a tutor in a way and it is in a way taking scaler's job uh, so now it's not currently at a place where beginners can also trust it but the fact that it is evolving is the crisis that we are talking about It's not that human expertise is completely irrelevant now. Just take for instance a personalized recommendation algorithm. That's the sort of thing that decides which products a website like Amazon should convince users to buy next. Now, that is something that AI can't fully handle yet and would still require ML engineers and data scientists to take care of. But for simpler coding work, the kind that entry level engineers would handle, AI is already winning. And that's not all. The industry on the whole has been facing global headwinds. Hundreds of tech companies across the world have let go of well over 150,000 employees in 2024 alone. To be fair to Scaler, there's only so much you can do when the job market is the way that it is. Right, so how is Scaler kind of addressing this crisis, Atul? Right. So the issue with AI being competition is on two levels. One level is that it is directly affecting student placements scalers placements where uh, a student who will get into an entry level job the nature of the job has changed the bar is much higher now because what was earlier uh, an entry level software developer's job is now being done by ai it's not being done like 100% but it's being done enough that uh, a- an experienced developer would take half the time uh than what he would do right so the other aspect is that S- scaler is trying to address this by incorporating more ai into their own modules so th- for all of the courses that they teach they now have a copilot assistant uh which helps them sort of uh, learn by talking to it it helps helps them summarize it helps them with the examples and all of that and the other thing is using ai as a tool has been incorporated into the uh, modules itself mm-hmm. so when you now when you learn a, a scaler when you get a scaler certificate the modules in it also involves how to use the ai to get the job done faster which was not the case earlier mm-hmm. so their way of going about it is introducing more ai and seeing ai as a tool rather than a competitor and make sure that the students that are coming into scaler are learning how to use the ai as well so scaler's new game plan is simple don't fight ai fold it into the business saxena is optimistic but so is the broader upskilling industry in fact it has a well worn analogy for what's happening they are comparing this phase to the industrial revolution yes jobs are being lost but in the long run the industry will grow 5 to 10 times is what some of them believe and with that will come an explosion of jobs now at least scaler has one stat working in its favor a study by online news outlet inside higher education found that only 4% of candidates complete free online courses for scaler saxena claims the completion rate is above 95% but for someone like nikhil none of that matters because the bottom line is no job offer no return on investment before i sign off i have a question for you have you signed up for upskilling courses in the past and has it actually helped you in your career let me know you can share your response with me on whatsapp the number is 8971108379 i will add it to the show notes of this episode Daybreak is produced from the newsroom of the Ken, India's first subscriber-focused business news platform. What you're listening to is just a small sample of our subscriber-only offerings. A full subscription unlocks daily long-form feature stories, newsletters, and podcast extras. Head to theken.com and click on the red subscribe button on the top of the website. Today's episode was hosted by Rahil Philippos and edited by Rajiv Sen.